Breakfast? Come and get it with Peter G'day. Russell G'day. Clark. Yes, it's time to step back into the kitchen and we have Peter Russell Clark in the studio. Good morning, sir. G'day, Cobbers, and everybody else as well. Yeah, good morning, Peter. Now, uh, this morning... We're talking about. Uh, You're sounding very formal. This I, no, I am actually. Yes, I'm a very, I'm a very formal. When I get into the kitchen, I get very formal. I like a little frilly apron and a tuxedo. That's the kind. I of I remember fun. seeing a French maid once uh, cooking in the kitchen with only a frilly apron on. <laughs> no, really, I know. No wonder you wouldn't forget that. Your either. Uh, your your life has been very multifaceted. <laughs> Punctuated with some <laughs> wonderful moments. <laughs> now, uh, what are we talking about this morning, Peter? Well, I thought kangaroos. Lots of people saying, oh, I love kangaroo meat. Now, why the bloody hell would you eat kangaroo when you could get beef, just for instance? Mm. See, beef's got a bit of a bit of fat through it, and that gives it flavour. And it's been, it's been bred in a paddock so you can eat it, whereas a poor old bloody kangaroo's not bred in a paddock. Mm. It just hops around the place and having a good time, and along comes somebody, and they shoot it, skin it, and we're supposed to eat it. And it's it's not a particularly nice meat to eat, and it's very dry. Now, I know lots of people say they love it, but I think that's bullshit. But is it not just it's because it's not cooked correctly, isn't it? The that's right. People say maybe you should stuff it, and I say, f*** me dead. It's st- as soon as you put a bullet between its bloody ears, it's stuffed, isn't it? <laughs> Poor bloody thing. It is, it is. So, but it is, it is a very dry meat. And so if you're going to cook it, say you're cooking it on a barbecue, well, you'll stuff it the second time, I can tell you. Really? Uh, it's, well, it just it, it doesn't do well to have a high heat with kangaroo meat because it dries it out. So if you're going to cook kangaroo meat, you need to cut it very into very thin strips as if you're doing a uh, beef stroganoff. Um, he was a, uh, a Russian prince, beef stroganoff. <laughs> really? Um, anyway, you cut it very, you cut it very thin, and then drop it into a pan with some olive oil, and just colour the outside of the meat, and then take it out and gobble it down. That le- leaves all the moisture inside the meat. You need to put something on it, you know, sprinkle it with a bit of garlic salt or something. But really and truly, you shouldn't cook it more than, say, an eighth of a minute per side. Mm. Okay, Peter Russell mm-hmm. Clark in this morning with a with a recipe for you, and we're going to listen to some music. Come back, and I know Doctor's got his pen at the ready because we're going to be talking. Maybe we could talk about cooking kookaburras. <laughs> <laughs> what about koalas? <laughs> well, what would you like to do? We, we can talk pie. You know, uh, Maybe we should be eating ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to find out what's going to come up, what's on the menu, and we're going to come and get it after these songs. Robbie and Marie. And the Dump Guy, Triple J. Uh, now, we're talking uh, about kangaroo, Peter, and um, you, uh, you're saying that uh, why don't we eat um, ourselves. Cooker Which is a very, or ourselves. Oh, well, I was going to say, or I've ourselves. got some friends, but since this is a family program, I mm. won't mention it. No, right. please don't do that. Um, but I, I remember I went to a... Uh, you're talking about eating our national emblems and stuff. I went to... Uh, uh, I was showing some Americans around um, uh, Western Australia on the trip between Perth and uh, Margaret River. And there's a place there where you can see some amazing uh, emus, Australian emus, and also some ostrich as well. And you can pat them and you can feed them. You sort of pay for a dollar to get um, some feed to feed them. Mm. And then you go back to the, to the little tourist shop uh, where you park your car and, and you can buy... fucking things. <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> exactly. You can buy emu and ostrich pies. That you've just fed. You've just fattened up. Well... See, I don't think... I, I reckon it's all right to, to eat something that, that we've bred for the table. But... I mean, poor old emus and kangaroos, for Christ's sake, you know. We're <laughs> well, with that in mind, you've got a kangaroo pie recipe for us this morning. Well, I was thinking of, of actually, uh, you know, kangaroos have got pouches, mm-hmm. and I thought maybe you could get some pita bread and shove kangaroo meat in it and oh, all yeah. that, and I thought, well, that's boring as batshit, <laughs> so I, I thought to be even more boring, you could dice up some kangaroo meat and with emu as well, if you wanted to. It just dies. Make it the whole, the whole coat of arms. Chuck the platypus in the kookaburra. Coat of arms exactly pie. Exactly right. First <laughs> the back of, all, of the 50 gotta... cents pie. <laughs> well, imagine trying to eat a kookaburra cabbage roll. I mean, it's just, <laughs> it's not right. Or a snake and cook a kidney pie. Come on. It's so, not... so what are we going to do? We're going to do a kangaroo pie? Yeah, well, we've got our, we've got our pie dish. Chop the meat up, put it in the into the uh, pie dish, uh, uncooked. And then... 
And the reason I'm doing that is because most people would brown the meat and that would keep the flavour in, but I want the flavour to come out into the sauce. Yeah. So uh, I just put the meat into the pie. I've got no idea what I'm f***ing talking about here. <laughs> I've got to tell you, actually. This is, I'm just making this up on the spot. I'm trying desperately to think what else to put into it. So maybe some black pepper mm-hmm. and you'd cut up also some uh, some olives and sprinkle in some olive oil. Uh, some what about carrot. veggies? Carrots? Yeah. yeah. Well, carrots and tomatoes because the, the carrots will go soft, a bit like me in the morning. Morning, mm. And the tomatoes have got juice, so they boil down and help keep the uh, the mixture moist. Mm. Uh, and really, that's all I'd do. And so how long in the oven? A bun in the oven. How long? Uh, <laughs> we haven't actually got the, the top on the bloody pie yet, uh. you bastards. Hang on. <laughs> so we've got the filling there. Instead of putting pastry, because we did pastry last week, I'd put some mashed potato. Mm. And you can buy that dehydrated mashed potato, which everyone sneers at, but I'm telling you, it's bloody ripper. You're a fan of the dehydrated mashed potato, the powdered mash. I am. Look, the reason I am is because it's terribly easy to do, Mm. and all it is is with potato with the water taken out of it. (laughs) And then you put the bloody water back in. Don't use milk. Just put water, and you've got a ripper product. You put that on the top of the pie, open the window, throw it out of the backyard, and go down to McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> Peter Russell Clark, as always, thank you very much. Thank you for your advanced Australian fare. <laughs> oh, I like it. I like it. <laughs> talk to you soon, sir. Hey, thank you, you very much. How do you stuff a koala? I don't know. Stick a gum leaf. Oh, it doesn't matter. See you next week or the week after, whenever. <laughs> Peter, we love Very you so good. much. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, Cobbers. Thanks if that good. didn't confuse you, it confused the shit out of me. <laughs> no, no, no it's okay. wonderful. It was great. <laughs> yeah, I was just wondering. What are these children doing here? Robbie Marie and the Dr. J.